Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is a katana that was sent to me from Ryan Sword for the purpose of review. So you should know that before you hear me ramble on and things like that. Know that, uh, one, I am a practitioner of martial arts, but not a particularly good one. I'm not an expert or, or any authority figure on it. And this was sent to me for review from Ryan Sword, so I didn't spend any money on it. In terms of what it cost, it was 135 bucks, I believe, is what this would cost, though it's not a model that I believe they sell. It's a, a design that was uh, put together and, and sent to me. But as I understand, it, this package would cost around $135 and I'll put links in the description down below and where you can find it uh, as well as you know the information I have uh, in this review I'm just gonna ramble I'm not gonna destroy it I eventually I will but I'm a little pressed for time right now I had a recent addition to my family and so my time is dedicated elsewhere but I do have some time to put together some quick thoughts just not to go out and swing the sword until it breaks so that's what I'm gonna do here eventually a destruction test or smashing into things video will follow this will just be me rambling and providing measurements and some some basic usage water bottles things like that anyway uh again no 135 bucks that's roughly what it cost i think it's a handsome sword but hopefully uh some of the greater detail and pictures will will give you some idea on if something like this is worth it or not again uh, i reached out to ryan sword because people have asked me a number of times what i think about ryan sword and so i, I didn't have one at least a recent one to review I reached out to them, asked for a review sample, and they graciously obliged and sent me this. Supposedly, there may be another sword coming that is of a higher grade or, or more elaborate than this. This is a basic offering, which honestly, I like to review a little bit more. I think these apply to more people. A lot of people might spend $135 on a sword, but not a lot of people are going to spend $500 or, or more. At least fewer people will. Anyway, uh, on to the bits and bobs, the features and whatnot on the sword. What I'm seeing on the Kosh right here is it relatively simple. I can't remember exactly what this is called, but there is a design pattern for it. And I've seen this before. And honestly, the uh, the casting quality is is muddy, as in these details are not particularly sharp and crisp and clean. Uh, but again, at $135, it's well within reason in terms of what other providers or what other people are putting out there in terms of fittings. Uh, the important bit is there's no sharp ledges. The transitions here to the Ito aren't exactly the best, but they do, they aren't bunched up in big wide knots or anything like that as as i have often seen on the kind of sub 200 dollars 120 130 dollar ish swords uh these the ito tends to be bunched up the knot tends to be very loosey-goosey and while this could be tighter honestly this is one of the cleaner presentations in this price category that i've seen and the fittings while simplistic i think they're going to do the job just fine um nothing particularly special to write about nothing particularly overwhelming in quality though in terms of function though, I have used this a, a little bit, nothing bit me. It was a comfortable thing to use. And so uh, worth noting that, that while it's handsome from a distance, it lacks some of the clarity that you might see or might desire up front. And uh, it function wise does, does everything it's supposed to do. I'm gonna move on to the grip, the handle, the ska. And there's a few parts to note about this. So this is wooden core. Uh, it has semi-gawa panels. I'm gonna assume, I don't think it's a full wrap. I don't see any of the kind of ledges in the panel. Sometimes you can make out a thick line where the panels begin and end. I don't see that here. Honestly, shape-wise, it's fine. It doesn't have a particularly interesting shape. It's not, not wasted or anything. It's just kind of a, a chunk that's put on there, but it's smaller and it fits nice in my big chunky sausage fingers. Very often these are overbuilt or thicker than they need to be. This is small and, and fun and easy to grip. The diamonds, um, you can see that they kind of run around in shape a little bit, but not not too crazy. They're, they're reasonably shaped and reasonably consistently sized. And if I look at the tightness over here, uh, there's some variability. Some spots are tighter or looser than others, but honestly, it's serviceable. Uh, the Saya, or the, rather the, the Ito, has kind of a synthetic kind of I don't know, <laughs> not necessarily the greatest feel. It doesn't feel like real silk, but it's fine. It's tight enough certainly to use. And in using it, I didn't find it uncomfortable. I didn't feel slippery or anything like that in moving it around. Uh, the nodules on the Samigawa panels underneath here don't particularly seem large, but they are, they are fine in terms of size. And I like, again, that I can't make out the kind of seam on the panel here. Uh, if I look really close, I can spot some areas where the wood you know side of the the panel is showing but honestly it's it's pretty intermittent and some of the diamonds run a little bigger and smaller but again 
and 135 bucks, you can't necessarily expect perfection. All right, I'm gonna move up to the Fuchi right here, this collar area, and transition-wise, this is nice. There's not really any ledge, nothing sticks out. I, I like to see that this is pretty even even workmanship for a sword in this price point. Ideally, this is kind of what it, what it looks like. The Ito butts up right here, and this is a tricky thing to do, or at least more than it might seem, because the uh, the Fuji Kashra is a cast piece that has a particular thickness, and then they have to cut the wood core, and it's got semigao, and then when you stretch this Ito material to tight, it changes in thickness. So to get it to line up and not have a ledge is kind of easier said than done. You have to have to kind of know what you're doing, or at least have, have good luck or <laughs> lots of experience doing it. So uh, to not have a ledge here is a good thing. It means it was shaped reasonably well, and, and honestly, it, it feels good on my fingers. If I choke up on the grip, nothing here bites me on the Fuji. It has the same kind of lack of refinement as the Kashra does, uh, but again, functional-wise, it, it does everything it's supposed to do. Before I forget, there are Minuki on here, and so what you can see Minuki-wise is there are little leaf things, and I would say clarity-wise, or at least aesthetics-wise, they match in terms of muddiness. They could be clear, they could be more detailed. What I do like about them, one, is they are small, and so they don't uh, jet out anywhere. There's nothing sharp for me to catch my fingers on. The Ito over them doesn't move around, and they they don't move when I kind of press on them underneath here. Sometimes they're not stuck down very well, or placed very well, or they're not very tight, and they kind of move loosely under the Ito. That doesn't seem to happen here. It's also worth noting that they are placed on the reverse side, so right now the Minukia resting in my palms as I hold the sword, and they're not kind of underneath my, my fingers, which is where I believe they would typically be. So they're resting in my palm. There's some name for that. I can't recall exactly what it is, but anyway, that seems to be what was done done here. Up until this point with the handle, everything has kind of been pretty pretty reasonable for a sword in this in this category of price. For 135 bucks, we've got Ito that's reasonably tight, transitions that are pretty good, no bunches or anything like that, and something that's overall comfortable and seems well well put together. Uh, the Suba is where things start to, to get a little rough, and it's not necessarily because of the aesthetics, though it is worth noting that there are some sharp little ledges in the Suba. It has kind of this, I think it's a, like a roofing tile pattern or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there are sharp ledges in here, and if I push my fingers in there, I can feel my skin getting caught. It's worth noting that when I w brought this sword out and did Iaido with it, and as I've been practicing with it, I'm trying to get the flub of my hand stuck in here to see if it'll bite me, and it, it doesn't. Your experience may differ. It's just worth noting there are sharp ledges, and if I try to push my finger into them, <laughs> into them, then then it does bite me, but as I choke up on the grip with, with, a, with a hand, it does not. Anyway, that's not really the problem. I haven't experienced any discomfort myself doing it. What I would say is the problem is that uh, the habaki is held on pretty tight, which is a good thing, but the suba is kind of flimsy enough that if I push on it, I basically deform the suba, and what I'm finding is as I push on the suba, if I have to push hard enough to release it, and bear in mind it's really cold where I live, uh, temperature may be changing, but I've, I've deformed the suba and bent it a few times and had to kind of press it down to bend it back, and so the, the suba hasn't broken, but you might be able to see it just a little bit disforming here. And these, this kind of Tsukashi outline that they have, let's see if I can get a better picture in the camera. This Tsukashi kind of design that they have is, is water jet cut out, but I, the material doesn't seem strong enough to really hold on to it. So you can kind of see that it, it bends and stays bent. And then <laughs> those little ledges do become a much more severe problem. So I'm nervous that uh, if I don't loosen the tension in the habaki, that uh, that this bending could be problematic. Or if I meet with a dull thud, my hand might bend the suba or something like that. So it doesn't seem particularly strong. And I noticed just in doing kind of noto and drawing it and pushing it out with my thumb, because of this tension, I noticed that uh, that the suba did in fact bend and would stay bent. And I could bend it back, but how many times I can do that before it becomes problematic? I don't necessarily know. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem with every single katana that they sell, but if you choose this particular suba, know that, that it's a little more sensitive, a little more delicate, um, and you may want to go with something that has a little bit more structural integrity. I'm going to talk about the habaki now. It's basically a very simple brass collared habaki, nothing overly special. It's got matching brass seppa and some brass colored shidadome in the kurigata area on the on the scabbard. Um, nothing particularly special. Again, though, for this money, I'm not expecting a whole lot in the in the realm of 130 bucks. Sometimes, though, uh, you will find that people do a little bit more decoration or adornment in this price category. There has been some that have had some embellishments or something to differentiate it. But I don't know if anyone really cares about the habaki. Honestly. It's 
it's probably just me because I tend to look at them so often. And this is the piece that has very little uh, change in the category. They all seem to have the same simple brass sabaki. Uh, that said, in terms of how it fits, uh, well, the back of the, the blade is sticking out a little bit, um, but other than that, it seems fine. And habaki in this price category are not, <laughs> not necessarily fit the way they would be traditionally or with as much care as somebody that would professionally do them. But as it is, it's, it's fine. Now I'm going to talk about the Saya, and this is one of my favorite parts of the sword, and that's because it has this kind of stonewash Ishime finish. It's not a traditional Ishime, but it's got a little splatter pattern on here that adds some character to it, and it also has this rattan wrap, this rib for your pleasure kind of look around the uh, the, the top area of the, the sword. And the rattan in this uh, price point I think is actually pretty helpful if the scabbard is not particularly structurally sound or were to come apart if you were doing a kind of a speedier draw. It's possible that you might cut into the meat of your hand and hopefully this rattan would offer some additional structural support that would prevent that from happening or at least potentially lessen the outcome. Um, anyway, there's no horn bits or anything like that that I can discern on here. So towards the end, the kojiri area, there's there's, there's no horn. The curricata is also worth noting that it came apart uh, as I undid the presentation knot. So this sageo, which incidentally is long and of reasonable quality, it's not as flimsy and crappy as, as some of them tend to be in this, in this price category. Um, I, I have to say I like the sageo, but when I undid it, this curricata came undone. And again, these shitadome right here are loose. So there's a wood curricata and these, these shitadome just come loose. I kind of like them to be glued in or stuck in in some way where they don't just come out so easy. It ends up scratching things up, and I have to say I'm not a big fan of, of these kind of loose shitadome right here. So I move this around, and they just pop out real, real easy, and they bounce around and scratch things up. Uh, other things, there's no horn uh, koiguchi area here, so it's reinforced by rattan, and it seems of a you know decent, but you don't necessarily get horn parts, I think, in this area. And again, the sageo is long, depending on what type of swordsmanship you study. You may want it longer or shorter. Um, you can always, I guess, clip it and make it shorter and try to burn the ends, but anyway, I digress. The point is the sageo came in a nice presentation knot, and it's nice and long, and it's not kind of shoelace, which is what some of them tend to be. So, so yeah, or the scabbard-wise, I like it, <laughs> apart from the fact that the curricata came off, that wasn't necessarily great. It also is worth noting that the curricata didn't appear to have like any adhesive in it, so I don't know how it was being held on, if it was just trying to be friction fit, um, but I didn't see any adhesive, a little dab of super glue, and it seems stuck on there, and I don't see a lot of, I mean, there's some imperfections around the paint, but not, not a huge, huge amount. All right, now I'm going to talk about the blade, the pointy, pointy, stabby part, the part you're perhaps most interested in. And uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is I don't recall what steel it's made out of. I will put that in the description down below. I just happen to have forgotten what it is at the moment. And I don't tend to pay a whole lot of attention to it because I have no way of really validating what type of steel it is, is, it is or isn't. So as long as it does sword-like activities, uh, and it is as advertised and, and that I can hit things with it and it doesn't break, then I think, I think I'm happy with it. But I understand that alluring types of steel may be in a, a compelling feature for you. I will put that in the description down below, at least what is advertised to have. Uh, in terms of feature set here, it is a through hardened blade. There's nothing particularly uh, interesting to look at in the surface of the steel. There's no patterns or anything like that, no hamon to be found, no hada, no folding lines or or anything of the like. And it's worth noting that you can get swords in the, this price category for uh, that are differentially hardened, that do have a hamon. And if that's something you're interested in, then uh, then it's also probably available from Ryan Sword or other offerings. One that comes to mind is the Ronin Katana 1045 blades that they make They have a, a hamon. But the point is that there are, there are a myriad of other swords out there in this category that have, or price point, I suppose I should say, that do have that if it's something you want. This is a through hardened blade though, and that's gonna make it a little bit more forgiving for the types of shenanigans I tend to put these swords through. So a uh, through hardened blade is, is gonna spring back into shape a little bit better. Hopefully it's gonna, gonna have less, uh, <laughs> less damage to the edge and things like that. Um, but that's not what this video is about. What I do have in terms of compelling features to look at, one, the planes on the blade are good. It's got a nice, smooth, flat planes. The blade is straight. It comes out of the handle straight. Uh, and the, the lines are, are overall pretty crisp and clean. So it doesn't have a lot of definition in terms of the characteristics that you might be looking for in a Japanese style sword. It doesn't have a hamon or a hada or something like that. And, but if you're just looking for a user piece that's forgiving, then what is here is nice. Uh, Shape-wise, it has a reasonably nice curve. I like the taper on the sword. 
and it uh, it overall what it is doing it's doing reasonably well in terms of uh, in terms of the blade also sharpness wise it's reasonably sharp throughout the sword now i haven't gotten a chance to really test it on anything of merit i did cut water bottles and things like that and it did those pretty well and it feels like the blade is consistently sharp throughout uh, throughout the the length of the blade even kind of where it maybe shouldn't be down towards the habaki anyway uh yeah overall overall i have to say i i like the execution on the blade and a sword and this price point it, it seems pretty good and it's also got kind of a nice mirror polish on it oftentimes i tend to be more satin colored so i like i like that it has kind of the the whole shebang polish <laughs> or at least that it's a mirror polish with still pretty clean lines it doesn't look like it was just taken to a buffing wheel or anything like that even though maybe that's what happened anyway i've harped on the polish and whatnot enough i think what's here is nice in terms of dynamics and how it handles i'm not going to put up the weapon dynamics computer as i may have mentioned at this point i can't remember where i am in the review anymore uh, i'm not going to do weapon dynamics because i don't know if you're going to be able to get one that feels the exact same but I like how it tapers. I'll include measurements and that kind of stuff, at least in the description down below. My impressions of the sword are honestly that it feels very, very nice. And doing Iaido, it was a comfortable sword to move around. It's not as light as an Iaito or something, you know, not made of steel. But overall, this is a very, uh, very comfortable, nimble little sword to move around. It's not loud though, so in moving it around, I don't hear kind of the swishing sound as I'm as I'm moving it. It's windy while it was doing Iaido outside the other day, and as I was listening to it, I couldn't. I couldn't really get it to make a lot of noise. So uh, that could be changed if maybe it had a reinforced tip or a bow he got put on or something about the geometry changed around a little bit. As it is, I can see that there is some distal taper in the sword. As it is, I can see there's some profile taper as well. And it lends itself to feeling both, you know, kind of in control with the point as, as in, in the slash. And it's overall a very comfortable little sword to move around. My only complaints in terms of user perspective, again, the Kree got had to be glued on. Once it was, it didn't move around and it was comfortable. Um, this ribbing in, in the obi doesn't move around, so I'm, I'm out of practice. I haven't been practicing very much because of lifestyle changes, you might say, as well as that it's cold outside. And, uh, and so um, moving the ribbing around in my obi, though, I'm not doing saibiki properly. I'm not getting it out of the way. It does move around, but that was, that was more me, just something to note if you choose this saya option. Also, um, no, no kind of wind sound or anything like that. Other than that, it was, it was a comfortable sword to move around and use. The other thing though is this uh, suba is, you know, it bends easily and you can kind of see I can just, you know, cant it off. I can push it with my thumb and I can bend it back. It's a little too, little too soft and I don't know if they're all going to be made like this or, or not, but I might, I might suggest if you have a custom iteration made, you just choose, choose a different suba option than this one. Um, or I suppose I could lighten it up, but I don't know. It seems like I can move this too easily. So that would be my only complaint in terms of using it. In terms of cutting, when I went actually to slash things with the sword and use it, it cut reasonably well. Um, it did all the things that it was supposed to do. It stayed sharp. There was some incidental damage worth noting though, and I will try to zoom in. It's pretty minor, and I don't think I whacked my stand. I think I whacked bottles, but bottle, this is a pretty thin edge. There's a, the most mild bit of rolling in the Manauchi area right here. Um, some very, very minor edge deflection, and I don't, again, I don't know exactly where or on what bottle it happened, but when you whack thick plastic bottles and caps and things like that, I've had this deform, you know, swords made of fancy steels and things like that. So there's, there's not much of an edge on here, um, or not much meat on the bone, so to speak. So I'm not terribly disappointed that it happened, but it is, I suppose, worth noting that in cutting some water bottles, there's some very, very minor edge deflection, which hopefully you are able to see. Uh, anyway, would it be nice if that didn't happen and the suba didn't, you know, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't problematic? Yes. But uh, as it is, the sword seems to do all the sword-like things that it's supposed to. It feels nice in the hand and for what is offered here at $135, well, I would make some changes to the suba as noted. I think it's a, honestly a very compelling sword in the, in the price point. So uh, if you're interested in a sword like this, I'll put links in the description down below. So do I personally think the sword is worth it or not? Well, for $135, I think you have a lot of features here. I really like the rattan wrap side. I like that the transitions in the Ito and overall the ska and how it feels. I like that the habaki is nice and tight, and I like that it doesn't have a huge amount of rattle, even though there is, there is a pinch. I like the shape of the blade, and I thought it was nice that it came really sharp out of the box and consistently throughout the, the blade, uh, and I didn't have any problems with the bending or anything like that. 
What I do take issue is the curry gata coming loose and the uh, suba bending the way it did. Those are, those are things that make me think, well, really, no. I would not be happy with this one for $135, given that I have had other $135 swords or $130 ballpark swords like the Ronin RK Katana or the Musashi Dragonfly that did not have those issues. Granted, they may have had other issues, uh, but they did not have, have these ones. And out of the box for a practitioner, if I was doing Yaido with it, this would have been concerning. It, particularly the suba needing to change it out would have been problematic for me. So uh, if those are isolated experiences and you buy something that doesn't have a loose curry gata and a loose or a suba that bends as easily, then I would say yes. A part of those are the two things that hold me up. I do know that the, the minor edge deflection might be a point of contention for some of you uh, based on my experience with thin swords cutting the tips of thick water bottles and things like that. I'm not terribly concerned about it. It'd be nicer if it didn't happen, but that's not really the deal breaker. The sub and the curry got it being broken are, are the two main concerns for me. The other things that may be worth consideration for you is Ryan Sword does have something of a colorful reputation in the sword buying community for the, the people that are nerds about it like I am. And I don't know that I'm an authority enough to speak on it, but it is worth raising it to your attention if you're interested in, in the reputation side of Ryan Sword or if, if any of that is a concern to you. I'll put links to some of the things that I found in Sword Buyer's Guide that I make me raise an eyebrow, frankly. Um, but with a, it's worth noting that it's hearsay. I didn't have this experience. I reviewed this particular sword and brought up the issues that I had. Uh, for me, Ryan Sword has been very uh, nice customer service wise, and, and I've had nothing but positive experiences with them so far. But I'm a YouTube reviewer guy, and my experience might be different than yours. And it's worth noting that there are uh, some, some indications online that some people are, are quite unhappy. Anyway, uh, I don't want to get into it though too much because I just it, it's hearsay and third party and that hasn't been my experience. It's just worth pointing out that there's enough cause for concern there that I'm raising it up towards the end here. And if it bothers you, then I would encourage you to do your own research and talk to the folks that have had those experiences and hopefully uh, they'll be better, better equipped to tell you their experiences firsthand than I would be third or fourth hand. So that is what I've got on the review. This one, no, but two easy points I think to fix for Ryan Sword. And that's all I've, I've got so far. I will bring the sword out. I will do a destructive test. I will put it through its paces in a more rigorous way when I get the time to do so. But at the moment, I don't have that time. And I thought it would behoove me to get this done and out so you could see at least what I've done so far. Hopefully the review has been interesting or helpful. Again, links and measurements and all that stuff is in the description down below. Thank you to Ryan Sword for sending the sample. Uh, more follow-up content will, will happen eventually. And that's all I've got. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.